So we know and we agree today that all living organisms are made up of cells. But there was this time when it was not even known what a cell was, what it did, and even how it looked. It was only around the 16th century that we came to know of the existence of the cell. But why exactly didn't anyone know about cells before that? The most obvious reason that will strike you and me is that most of the cells are really tiny and they did not have any instruments to observe them back then. You can't discover something if you cannot see it now, can you? And the microscopes that we have today did not actually exist back then. It was only around the 16th century that lenses capable of observing really, really tiny objects began to flourish. So in 1661, King Charles II of England wanted to know what the insect world looked like. He commissioned an examination of the natural world under the lenses. And this is when I will introduce you to Robert Hooke. He was an English physicist, actually, who was a contemporary and an enemy of the very famous Isaac Newton. So here's an interesting story about Newton and Hooke. They were believed to kind of be like enemies. You would know what Isaac Newton is most famous for, right? Yes, his laws of motion, his theory of gravity, and also that he got hit by an apple on his head. But Robert Hooke had already discovered that there was a force of gravitation that existed between the Earth and the Sun, which actually ensured that they both did not scoot off in different directions. However, it was Newton who put all this knowledge into a universal theory that could explain gravity in a systematic and a mathematical way. So, Newton got credit for the discovery. A peeved Hooke held a grudge against Newton for the rest of his life. Anyway, coming back to our discussion today, which is about cells. Until that time, the only lenses in use were the simple lenses that we used for reading. Now, Hooke accepted the king's assignment and he devised an instrument which had a six inch tube fitted with two convex lenses like you can see and an oil lamp as a light source and what he did was that he observed a bunch of organisms like louse, flea, gnat, housefly even under his primitive microscope and made drawings of his observations in his book. But Hook was a curious guy. He didn't stop at that. He wanted to know how other random stuff looked under this fantastic new instrument. So he recorded the details of all these observations in his book called Micrographia. This was in fact the first book on microscopy. So one of these days when he was just putting tiny things under the microscope and looking at them, he decided, hey, I want to observe a thin slice of cork. And it is what he saw under this thin slice of cork that we remember him for today. What he saw was a bunch of compartments which he drew like this. Since he thought these compartments looked like the small rooms that monks used to stay in, he decided to call them cells based on the term cellular, which is what the monk rooms were called. And this is the story of how the cell was discovered and how it got its name. But the hollow empty chambers that Hook observed weren't really alive and I'm sure you noticed that. These cells that he sketched were long dead and these were just the walls left behind after all the living components were gone. This basically must mean that although Hook discovered that cells did exist, he pretty much did not see them alive. Who did then? Let me introduce Anton von Leeuwenhoek, not a scientist, mind you, but a Dutch lens maker. And he believed that he could make a better microscope than Robert Hooke and improve upon his work. So he crafted way better lenses and constructed an improved microscope. He made really thin lenses which he embedded into a metal sheet with a small opening in the center to observe the sample. He would apply sample on the sample pin over here and by turning the screw, called the main screw, he would adjust the height of the sample so that it was exactly where he could observe it. And then 
by turning the screw uh, which he called the adjustment screw he could adjust the distance of the sample from the lens now this helped him focus the image much better simply by adjusting the distance between the sample and the lens all the screws and the different ways of adjusting the sample and the image made this microscope way more complicated and much 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 more superior to hooke's microscope after that he did what hooke did he observed observed random stuff as well like semen blood pond water muscle tissue and so on and so on and so on under his microscope and this is actually how he ended up observing microorganisms under his microscope he looked at them and he was like these guys are really small the small animals and he called them animal cues which is small animals this was the very first time a living microscopic organism or a cell had been observed makes sense now that we call anton von leeuwenhoek as the father of microbiology